Hello, my fellow makeup enthusiasts. Welcome back to my perfectly healthy expression of makeup enthusiasm. I have enthusiasm for a lot of things, but today I'm doing a makeup video, so it's makeup enthusiasm. My name is Lainey, and I do realize that it's been a minute. I got a new computer, I got some new software, I got some new lighting, and I was really hoping that I would be able to come back with a much slicker look, more professional, better lighting, better editing, alas, that ain't gonna happen because a lot of the new programs that I got do not run on my new computer. I mean, they will eventually, but I need help to get them to, so it's gonna be a while. In the meantime, you guys have stuck by me through my unprofessional setup and my unprofessional lighting. It, it's been a lot worse in the past, and so I love you guys for that, and I know that this is a lot of business, a lot of housekeeping. You may not care about that, but that's just where I've been and why it's been so long. So, I thought that an easy way to segue back into the YouTube space would be to do a Makeup On My Mind video. I did do a little speedy mini tutorial showing some of the new makeup I got, so let's start off with that. And let's start off with a palette that I've been eyeing for so, so long. The Lunar Beauty Moon Spell Palette. Now, I finally got this. I finally broke down and ordered it from the Sephora website. I kept thinking that they were going to bring this to the store. And I kept saying, I'm gonna wait until I can swatch it in the real world and make sure that it's something that I'm going to love, that I'm going to use, because I've gotten pickier about my makeup purchases and I will do a whole video about that. I think it is healthy to love makeup. I also think that it's healthy to keep yourself in check. So that video is coming soon. Anyway, I was sure that this was going to come out before Halloween. When Halloween came and went and this still wasn't in the store, I was like, man, Sephora, that's a big missed opportunity because I feel like a lot of people who don't watch YouTube, who don't follow the beauty community, but who go to Sephora and love makeup would have been drawn to this and would have probably picked this up if they had just seen it, even if they had never heard of it, if it had come out around Halloween. So Sephora, I feel like that was a big fail on your part. I don't know, maybe it was losing Lunar Beauty that made that decision. Anyway, somebody somebody missed the mark on that. But I finally did get this palette. I really love it. Hopefully the video that I shot where it was really, really speedy showed what you can do with this. I did post a picture on Instagram of the look that I came up with. I only used the pinks and purples, honestly. I have completely ignored the bottom two rows. And I'm not gonna apologize for that. That's me, these, there's nothing wrong with these colors. They're beautiful, they're just not my colors. And honestly, this palette for these shades on the top row, it was worth it to me because I really love these shades. I've created a lot of looks with these shades and this, is the, this has been the palette that I've been reaching for for the past couple of weeks. So, major win. No problems with it. If you have any specific questions about it, comment down below. If you wanna see me bust out a couple of looks with this palette, I'll be happy to do it. But honestly, I'm just enjoying playing with the colors that I love. Another product that I was really excited to show you that I picked up in the past month was the Love Lux Beauty Opal Lustrous Pressed Pigments. Now, I'm gonna say something. What the fuck, Love Lux Beauty? Because this ain't pressed. This is loose. This is, reminds me of the Notoriously Morbid semi-loose formula because it is not pressed and it's pretty. I've used it with glitter glue and without glitter glue and I've used it with a mixing medium and without a mixing medium and it's perfectly lovely. It has a nice reflect to it. Um, I've worn it several times. I haven't been mad at it. I haven't been disappointed in it. Not really disappointed in it. I am disappointed that it's not pressed, and honestly, it's it's just not as poppin' as it looked on the website or on Instagram. And Love Lux Beauty, I talked to a couple of you in the comments on my video where I mentioned their For the Love of Fall palette. Um, I'm a little bit pissed off at them for filtering or enhancing or, or otherwise doctoring their photos to make them look more poppin', to make their products look more poppin' than they really are, because this is pretty, but it ain't poppin'. Now, a product with which I am 100% in love is the Melt Amore Eterno. I'm not sure that I'm saying that right. Please don't chase me with sticks if I'm not. But this gel eyeliner, this is the only thing I got besides a little brush, which 
I'm not sure where it is, so it's in, it's in the other video. I'll link it in the cards. I love this thing. This is the only thing that I got from the collection because one of the palettes seemed a little bit dark for me and the other palette seemed a little similar to Radioactive with all of the elements that I loved about Radioactive plus some elements that I didn't love so much, so I passed on that, but this stuff is great. I'm going to buy a second one. I'm going to buy the green color. I can't remember the name of it, but I'll put it here. I'm going to buy the green eyeliner because ColourPop stopped making Teaspoon, and I've decided that I do not like the ColourPop pencil creme gel liners at all. I like the pot liners, and so since they discontinued that product, why? I think it was a good seller. What, what, what are you thinking, ColourPop? I mean, seriously. But Melt has one. It's way more expensive, but this stuff is really good. It does sheer out a little bit, but I find that if you blend it together with your eyeshadow, you can create a really magnificent, gorgeous look. I highly recommend the Melt Gel Liner. Like, really, really, really recommend it. And then I have the Linda Halberg Fusion Crayons Kit. I think that they may be having some kind of Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale on this because it is $50, and I know that that's a little bit steep. When you break it down, though, that's 10 bucks a liner, which is pretty good, but $50 for a whole set. I get it. I get why people might be a little bit hesitant, but I will say that Linda herself said in the video that these are creamier than the old formula, and that is true, that they work better in the water line than the old formula, I would have to agree. These things work in my waterline, whereas the old formula did not. Um, they work great on the top at, to line the upper lash line. I just really have nothing bad to say about them. them. I'm going to swatch them off for you so that you can take a peek for yourself. And here we go. I've got a lot to cover in this video, so I'm not going to go liner by liner and talk about them. Let me just say that they're very good. They are very smudge resistant. They are creamy. They go on smoothly, and they look beautiful, and you have a really nice selection of colors. I did kind of smudge that one a little bit, but generally speaking, if you give them like a minute to dry, which I did not, they last really well and they look really beautiful and there's a really nice variety of colors in this in this kit. You have these two mattes and then these three shimmers and I'm very happy, very, very happy with that purchase. So talk about staying power. See, I tried to actually wipe them off and they're, they're sticking around. They're good. So let me talk about another product. This is the Kaleidos. I say Kaleidos because I think Kaleidoscope, but a lot of people say Kaleidos. I don't think it matters. I'm talking about the product. If I mispronounce the brand and you want to burn me at the stake, please don't. It's just a word. So I got the Comet Catcher highlighter. These are the Space Age highlighters. And I really like this a lot. You don't get a whole lot of product in here. I don't know exactly how much. don't really care exactly how much. This is a little bit awkward when it comes to storage. It's super cute packaging, but it's not very sleek if I'm being honest. Um, does it show up on my hand? Well, hopefully you watch my little mini video. I mean, seriously, it's like two minutes long. If you don't have anything else to do, go watch it. It's really quick. And I think this highlighter is really pretty. Did I need it? No. Did it replace my Smashbox crystallized highlighter as my soulmate highlighter? No. Am I happy that I have it? Yeah, absolutely. Did I need all of them? Hell no. I'm glad I got this one. So let's move on to some newer stuff. All of that was stuff that I bought over the course of the time when I was absolutely away from YouTube. There have been a couple of new items that have caught my eye, most notably and possibly a little bit embarrassingly, the Lovebird palette from ColourPop finally caught my eye and I did order it. And I believe that this has been out for a while, but I just noticed it last week. I don't know if it was because it was usually paired with two other really, really boring palettes. And so I just glossed over it, but I'm wearing it on my eyes today. I got a couple of compliments from strangers on my eye makeup today. I don't know if it's reading on camera, but in the real world, apparently it looks banging. This palette does have three pressed glitters in it. And I think that that's going to keep a Lot of people away. Now here's my take on the ColourPop pressed glitters. The ones in the palettes are great. The singles suck a bag of dicks. So all of these I think are beautiful. I'm wearing the one in the middle, cheap, cheap. I'm wearing that one today. I think it's gorgeous. I think it's easy to work with. They don't cause me 
any problems if they are within a palette. When they are just singles, they're, they're pieces of shit. But I love this palette. I really love this pink with shimmer. I think that that's a gorgeous color. I haven't really had a chance to play with that very much yet. I will do a full review of this palette if you want to see it. I don't know. I feel like I'm late to the game because I didn't even notice this palette until it, it had been out for a couple of weeks. But I am glad that I have this. I think I got it on sale. I think it was $8.50. I mean, totally worth it. So, um... I don't really have that much to say about it. I like it way better than the Strawberry Shake palette, and it's cardboard. I know, that probably doesn't make a difference to a lot of people, but I really hate the cheap-ass plastic packaging that you get with a lot of the monochromatic palettes. I hate that packaging. I mean, really, really hate it. The cardboard packaging, that's where it's at for me. And this is cardboard. So I love that. I did get a Blur Luxe lipstick after much deliberation. I have decided that the Blur Luxe lipstick formula from ColourPop is my absolute favorite lipstick formula in the world of all time. I got the shade Oasis. This is a reddish coral and it looks a little brown on my hand but on the lips I feel like it does look like kind of a muted red coral and I do really like this. I know that I will get a lot of use out of this and I got the powder. It's nice and big. I was kind of disappointed in the Urban Decay Sparkling Body Powder, so I wanted to give this one a try. It's much bigger. It doesn't have a scent, which is fine. I like scented things, but as long as the product's good, I can do without the scent. Let me try to get this shaken up a little bit, and let me put some on. Can we zoom in? See how we're looking? So let's move on to makeup that I do not actually have in my possession, and I'm going to start with Peachy Queen Cosmetics. I am still high-key curious about that brand. They have this really cool-looking neon Alien Queen palette. Curious about that. They have a Friends-themed I'll Be There For You palette. I was one of those people who was very dismissive of Friends as a show when it first came out because I thought that it was just for basic bitches. But then eventually I came around, I watched it for myself, and I realized it's iconic, it's funny as hell. I, I will always love that show. And the palette actually looks pretty cool too. They have another palette. Oh, they have the um, Handbook for the Recently Deceased Beetlejuice palette. I'm really, really curious about this brand, but I wish I could know more before I took the leap and bought a palette. Ever since Thanksgiving, I've been in kind of a cranberry sauce induced stupor. That has been the only thing that I have ingested for, I think, I think the past three days or so was that jellied cranberry sauce. Go ahead, judge away. But all I wanted to do was lie in bed and watch YouTube videos. But I wanted to watch something different. So I finally watched the Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson documentary uh, going all through the process of developing the Conspiracy Collection. And let me tell you, I was riveted. I totally understand why people were losing their fool minds over that collection. I got so invested. I felt like I was part of the team. And I know that that's not logical. They don't know who the fuck I am. They don't care who the fuck I am. But I get it now. And I do have the mini controversy palette and I will show that off in a future video where I talk about building my own lucky bag for Beautylish 2020 instead of buying a mystery lucky bag because I got sick of getting crap. So that's coming up, but I really am drawn to the whole conspiracy collection now. And so yeah, I've heard mixed things about both palettes. I've heard really good things. I've heard not so good things. But there are things from the collection that I really do want to try. I don't want everything, but I'm going to get some things. I think that they're restocking in March. I think that that's as soon as I'm going to be able to get my hands on it. And that's okay. I got plenty of other stuff to think about between now and March. And when March comes around, it will be mine.
So that wraps it up for the makeup portion of this video. I haven't really been that invested in makeup lately. And I go through phases like that. I still buy it, I still notice it, I still love it, but I just haven't been on the makeup train lately. I've been more interested in clothing, I've been more interested in self-care, and I've been more interested in my profession in psychology, in therapy, I'm studying for the national licensure exam, and so my focus has shifted quite a bit, and I will be making psychology videos in the very near future. And I also will be making a video talking about how my makeup purchasing habits are going to change. It's not a low buy, it's not a no buy. It's just kind of a philosophy of makeup video. And also with a psychological slant, talking about when it becomes a mental illness or when it becomes a problem that you might want to try to get under control and when it's not a problem. And I think that that is a useful video. Um, in addition to that, I am planning a video, I already have it outlined, explaining why I will never be a big YouTube star, I will never have an enormous following, and why I am 100% okay with that. And the number one reason is because I don't stick to one topic. And I know that that's kind of a no-no, and I don't care. I've got a lot of interests. I have a lot of things to say, so I'm going to talk about them all, and I hope that that is okay with you. So on that note, that wraps it up for today. As always, thank you so very much for joining me. Follow me on Instagram. I will follow you back. Throw me a pity like. Give me some encouragement to make some more videos. Very special shout out to you if you were watching this video on the toilet. And until next time, stay adorably obsessed with whatever brings you joy.